Dr. Stuff, uh, Dr. Saraha, and uh, Dr. Karthik Masagonda. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting us. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, as part of this interview, we would like to know more about Evonik, its solutions for the aquaculture segment, and uh, what are the future plans for the industry? Okay. Briefly explain what Evonik does. Okay. Shall I start? Yeah. Okay, Evonik is uh, one of the world leaders in uh, specialty chemicals and uh, we are based in Germany and animal nutrition is uh, one of the business line under nutrition and care segment. Um, we have more than 60 years of experience in amino acid business, so that's our uh, strength. Um, so we have in terms of product lines, we have amino acids, uh, essential amino acids and uh, also probiotics. Um, and also, yeah, to support the feed industry, uh, we have uh, some services, analytical services and uh, software tools uh, that to enable the feed producers to, uh, to better produce the feed, uh, let's say more sustainably and more economically. Bonifier, uh, I think your product lines are for aquaculture is into amino acids and probiotics. Is there any other product lines that you have for uh, aquaculture beyond these? Today, yes, we have uh, mainly amino acids and probiotics, but of course we are working to bring uh, more products uh, that can help the industry. Yeah? So, For example, I could also mention about uh, algae oil, but it's, uh, it's we are, let's say, Evonik together with BSMs, we have created this Vera Morris company, so that is uh, selling algae oil. So, uh, how has been the adoption of amino acids in the aquafeeds in the past 5 or 10 odd years? How have you seen the customers take it in? Yes, okay, maybe I share experience and you can also start from uh, your experience from China. Yeah. Uh, so, to start, I mean, you know, why Avonik uh, started producing, let's say, methionine. So, that was the uh, first uh, supplemental amino acids we produced uh, back in 1950s. Uh, that then we saw the demand of this amino acid, uh, especially yeah, in the, when you make a uh, soybean and corn based diet for poultry for example then we saw oh that's methionine and then we saw improvement in performance so that's where the the concept developed this uh, limiting amino acids uh, in the modern feed so if you look at the poultry industry as yes, they su supplemented methionine and then they found uh, the next limiting amino acids lysine threonine uh, tryptophan uh, valine so the more are coming uh, swine industry also followed, uh, supplementing more amino acids, uh, of course, I mean, they are the leaders. Uh, um, then for aqua industry, we say uh, in the aqua industry, I would say like salmon is really the leader. Uh, salmon today, if you see, uh, uh, 30 years ago, salmon industry was also not supplementing much, uh, but uh, today uh, they are supplementing uh, four or five uh, different amino acids, methionine, lysine, threonine, tryptophan, uh, Histidine, in fact, yeah. Um, and uh, we see uh, in other industry like, okay, after salmon, we see the supplemental amino acids because that is the way to produce sustainable feed. Yeah. And uh, uh, tilapia, uh, cod feed producers, uh, uh, catfish industry, now also even shrimp uh, are uh, uh, supplementing more of these amino acids so that you can balance the diet for amino acid profile. And also, you can preserve some of the intact protein sources. And uh, the perspective from China? Um, yeah. Yes, actually, because now we are getting more and more knowledge about the animal nutrition, and we know that the animal actually they don't need the protein, they don't need lipid. What they need actually is the amino acid, the essential amino acid, and also the essential fatty acid. So that's why we uh, produce to meet the requirements of different customers globally. And uh, yeah, so that's why, yeah, I think this is because we are talking about the sustainable, we are talking about the economic, we are talking about the environment friendly. So the idea, protein conception, I think this is the most uh, um, uh, key strategy to achieve this, yeah. Yeah. Also, like for shrimp industry, we have a, a specialized uh, product called uh, Kovi Methmet, which is a D-peptide uh, produced mainly for crustaceans because uh, 
uh, of the way they eat because they take longer time to consume the feed. And uh, then we came up with this product, which is a depeptide, which has a very less water solubility. And also we have data showing that yeah, it can uh, better synchronize uh, with the other amino acids coming from intact protein sources uh, because it's uh, the digestive tract is small and it's uh, quickly process the, the feed. Uh, so we find it's uh, definitely uh, uh, more sustainable to use uh, met mets in uh, shrimp feed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, to also to mention, if you look at the bioefficacy, uh, yeah, Kobe met met is uh, uh, two to three times more efficient compared to the DL methionine. And uh, of course, one of the chief in, uh, important uh, in inputs for uh, for having inclusion of amino acids into the feed is that the actually the nutrient profile and everything of the animal should be perfectly analyzed so that the requirements the amino acid requirements and all are identified and then of course you'll be supplementing it so for which all species is this profile now finalized okay yeah for the amino acid requirements uh, let's say we have a we look at the industry, people are formulating based on the protein. Then, of course, you know, protein uh, is just the nitrogen. If you, you can just put even urea and make up your protein. So, I think that people realized over the time, okay, amino acid profile is what we need to uh, focus on. Yeah? And um, yes, uh, in terms of species, uh, salmonids, uh, we have the data uh, that's developed. Uh, then, we have database developed for, uh, for carp tilapia and shrimp. We are also working on uh, catfish. But also, I mean, you know, this uh, database, not only Evonik, uh, also other industry and the academic people, yeah, the, the data that have been, uh, knowledge have been generated. Uh, if you look at, I mean, sea bream, sea bass, uh, or uh, fungasias, I mean, there are some data available. Uh, so it may not be complete. Uh, people are working, I mean, industry together with academics are working to make the knowledge uh, more accurate, yeah. So when it comes to uh, uh, fishes available in India for farming, is there any uh, one of these that have been uh, identified completely? Now, uh, for India, if you talk about Indian major crops, uh, so what we take, and uh, there are data available for specifically for Indian major crop, uh, but what we find is, you know, if you look at the amino acid profile in the whole body, Indian major crop to common crop, they're very similar, yeah. And uh, so today in the database, we are assuming uh, that uh, the data that have been generated in for common crop can also be applied for Indian major crops. And we have seen it, we have tested and it works quite well. Uh, yeah, uh, but of course there are specific data uh, generated for Indian major crops as well. Now uh, coming to the probiotics lines. So uh, what are the uh, probiotics lines that you have for uh, aquaculture? For aquaculture, we have EcoBioL, which is basically based in the amino lipid uh, patient's uh, strain. Uh, this, yeah, that is the strain uh, we have for uh, aquaculture today. Because we are working on uh, more uh, products uh, that are under development. Uh, because when you talk about gut health, uh, there you can talk about different things. Yeah, uh, probiotics, of course, is one of the promising solutions. So, what do you think between concoctions of probiotics, uh, probiotic species? versus a single a probiotic species. Uh, the pros and cons between these two things, can you just weigh on them? We have a single strain uh, species, which is uh, uh, basically ecobiol for uh, aquaculture. Yes, there are companies that are marketing uh, multi-strain products as well. Uh, the question is, you know, you can uh, dose only so much in your feed. It's a feed probiotic as a feed additive. Let's say you are supplementing 500 gram or 1 kilo per ton of feed. So in that, yeah, you have only so much space and uh, whether you want to go for one strain or multi-strain. That means you add more strains, then you are going to compromise the space of other strain. And uh, so you have to, yeah, uh, if the companies are coming up with the multi-strains, um, that means they have to make sure that the, uh, their products are working e efficiently. Now because in uh, inside the animal, you know, when you have a uh, more than one strain, and the, for the bacteria to germinate and grow, they need nutrients and space, and uh, they can compete each other. Uh, so, people coming up with the multi-strain have to be very careful. And also, one strain can release 
antibacterial anti uh, microbial peptide which can go against the other bacterial strain and it also depends on which environment uh, because some uh, uh, strain can be efficient in one environment versus the other if you think oh, i may work in this that's why we are uh, without understanding much about all this we put multi strain uh, it can work very well against to each other and it, the product may not be effective also yeah. so china being a world leader in uh, fish production and also of course consumption is a different aspect now china has adopted amino acids in feed formulation and uh, can you uh, tell us or share with us ki what has been the changes that have happened since then what improvements have happened after that yes um actually in this decades the chinese uh, i mean the technical the technology for the feed production is improved a lot because now we are seeking a way uh, for sustainable development for agriculture and uh, yeah for uh, i mean for every raw materials not only for um um animal sources also for the plant sources actually the amino acid profile is not balanced so we are seeking the balanced way to produce the feed so how can we achieve this when we supplement the amino acids we found that it's achieved it can improve the growth performance the feed utilization and also the digestible and uh, yeah we also can reduce the feed costs so this so the the industry they are now want to yeah uh use this uh way to to uh develop more sustainable and economic economically we i mean also for research i think we have done over the years several research to demonstrate to go into the uh, zero fish meal diet in different species and also to reduce the excess crude protein level in the in the diet yes i mean uh, you can also yes. share some of the trials yeah yes yes actually we have uh make lots of efforts on the fish meal reduction and also the protein reduction in aquaculture because we know that um the remote area is limited so we we will use more vegetarian use more plant sources in the diets so and also use the low fish meal low protein even zero fish meal in the diets as we know that um because animals they need the essential amino they need the essential um a uh, nutrients so how can we um um prove need the requirements yeah may, may, yeah how can we meet the requirements of the animals so we we use the amino acids we use the yeah we use the essential amino acid to meet the requirements so, yeah yeah i mean to add to that because we are talking more about sustainability i mean if you see by 2020 2050 the human population is going to increase to 9 billion yeah. that means there is going to be less space for agriculture and we know the water table is going down and less space for agriculture and uh, but there is an increase in the demand of meat consumption and uh, to meet the demand for protein uh, for the human being and this is a very, very good protein source for the hum- for for human and uh, the way to produce is like yeah to be more sustainable and that's how you know you, then you cannot have a animal more of animal product or fish meal in your diet you have to move into this vegetable based diet yeah. Yeah. so so finally uh, for evonik what would be the plans for aquaculture segment uh, for the next 2 or 3 years down the line i think this is uh, not only for 2 to 3 years actually we are looking in more future for this uh industry for agriculture industry and we yeah we talk a lot about the sustainable so in agriculture actually we have lots of challenges not only for the nutrient nutrition requirements but also for the raw materials and the digestibility and also the disease how to control it and uh, yeah everything so for our ironic we uh not only supply the excellent products actually we also make a lot of efforts make a lot of r&d on the research on how to uh prom- promote the low fish meal diet the low protein protein diet the more sustainable way and how to make 
the um the feed more accurate accurate yeah to to give the solutions for the for the customers and the we we are yeah we are doing yeah. more about this yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, nutrition has been our focus. Now we are moving moving more into the health because, uh, yeah, a, a good nut nutrient di diet without uh, having a good health of the animal, yeah, is not no use. So of course, uh, yeah. So um, we are expanding our portfolio from amino acids to now also to adding more uh, gut health uh, related products. So that's the area we are working. Yeah. Um, also. I mean, as it's, I mean, with the, together with Veramaris, we are also supporting low or uh, no fish oil diet uh, to make the industry more sustainable. We would say, yeah, in the long run, we are also going into the uh, digitalization uh, because uh, with all the uh, artificial intelligence and uh, the technology we have on uh, recording the data continuously, yeah, we can monitor the animal, uh, you know, around the clock and. Uh, the water quality and accordingly, you know, you, the feed feed intake and the, the nutrient requirement can all change. And uh, we will move more in this direction of digitalization. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that interview. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I hope that when, once you have uh, more updates on uh, new launches or something, you'll let us know. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhattar.